Can you guys say praise God? Praise God. What a blessing we've already had in so many ways this worship service and I feel like we don't even need to go on anymore but we're going to talk for a little bit about the sealing of God and is that an important subject? It is such an important subject because it's a life changer. It's a game changer. It's, it's so important that without the seal of God, this is all there is. And I don't know about you, if you've ever gone by graves and uh, graveyards and thought to yourself, huh, that's where I'm heading. And that's all there is. How sad would that be? And there's a lot of people that probably think that way. And that's where I'm heading. This is all there is. Is that what the Bible says? That's all there is? No way. Without this book, I would be such a miserable man. I don't want to even think about the man I would be without this book telling me about who I am and who created me and who then saved me and who's then coming back for me. If it wasn't for this book, I'd be horribly miserable. So we go on into this concept of sealing and I just kind of want to throw out some takeaways right off the bat basically what I just said the general concept again is Jesus created everything right and when he created everything did he create it perfect or flawed perfect. Once he created everything, sin entered the world. Not because of Jesus and created sin, but because people decided to trust self over their Savior, over their Creator. And they trusted self and they went against God. And so sin entered this world. So then Jesus came to pay the penalty for that sin. Because Jesus said, if you, if you sin, you will die. And so, then Jesus, he paid that price for us, and then he came down here also to show his perfect love for us, to show us how to overcome as he overcame. Now that's a concept right there that is part of the sealing is as we're on this planet, the goal is for us to be sealed perfect. Now that can sound kind of tough. I had somebody come to me years ago and said, how, how can we ever be perfect? And it's actually pretty easy. It is. By surrendering our lives to him, asking him to forgive us of our sins, like 1 John 1, 9 says, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, the Bible says he will do, and then fill our lives with him and his Holy Spirit to live his life out through us. In that moment, in that little moment that we have surrendered and invited Christ into our lives and he's cleansed us from all unrighteousness like he promises, I would say that in that state, right that moment, you are perfect. The robe of Christ's righteousness is around you and in that moment, you are perfect. 
not because of yourself, but because of Christ. That's a cool thing. And the great opportunity is to then live in that state of fully surrender to Christ, with him living his life out through us, and never once taking back self, as our Adam and Eve relatives did, and we've done so much all of our life, never taking back self, but living, letting Christ live his life out through us, and his righteousness always robe put around us. That's an incredible opportunity. So then, once the judgment happens, just before Jesus busts through those clouds, there's going to be a judgment. Because Jesus said that when he comes back, his reward is with him. Right? His reward is going to be with him, either for good or condemnation, and you, you, you'll have made that decision yourself. And we have that opportunity to decide for ourselves. And if you think you're going to get to the judgment point and the ceiling point, and there's going to be something that pops up on your phone, oh, judgment is happening for you, and the ceiling is about to happen for you right now. Here's your sign. And then it has like a little, little timer and it starts ticking down from one minute. Maybe it gives you one minute. And it goes 59, 58, 57, 56. And you have that, those few seconds to make it right with Jesus right then before that thing turns zero. That's not going to happen. You're not going to get a message on your phone letting you know when the ceiling time comes. So the opportunity we have is to live for Christ and let him be the Lord of our lives all the time so that whenever that happens, we're sealed with Christ in us and his righteousness in us. That's that's the concept right there. Because if we don't receive the seal of God, we're then going to receive the alternate, and there's only two choices, right? There's the seal of God, and then there's this other thing. What's that called? The mark of the beast, right? I don't know which one you want, but I know which one I want. I want the seal of God. So, how do we get ready for that seal? Because that is so important that we receive that seal. I want to just kind of go into a quick little definition. I tried to get some definitions. None of the definitions really I like for this message. One of them says to fasten with or as if with a seal to prevent tampering. Hmm. That was one of the ones I kind of liked for this message, to prevent tampering. Is there anybody that's trying to tamper with us and our salvation? We do. We have an enemy, and he has lots of cronies that have solicited his help to mess with us and our lives, and, and it's very real, on a spiritual and even physical basis. So I love the concept of being sealed by God, protecting us uh, from being tampered with. And uh, there's another one here. It says, to close or make secure against access, leakage, or passage by a fastening or coating. Hmm. Another one is to fix in position or close, um, close breaks in with a filling, kind of like plaster and stuff. You put plaster up on the walls, and then you have cracks in between those, and you got to put a sealant in there, and then you got to sand it like crazy. And, and if you're someone like Rob, you have an eye for those sealed joints. And what I look at that wall, and I say, wow, yeah, that, that looks nice. He says, hmm, that needs a little more mud. 
and he puts another coat over it, and then sands it again, and then sands it. Oh, wow. So sealing up little cracks and stuff are, is important. Another definition was to determine irrevocably or indisputably. Let's let that sink in. I thought this one was really good. To determine irrevocably or indisputably. I got goosebumps thinking about this. The seal of God, once you receive it, is going to be irrevocable. The mark of the beast, on the other hand, is also going to be irrevocable and permanent. The other thing it said, or indisputable. Is that word true for those two? The seal of God? Is that going to be indisputable? It is. Is the mark of the beast going to be indisputable? It is. And that's what this thousand year period of time God has set aside after Jesus comes back. There's, he's given a thousand year period of time to show that it's indisputable why all the people that are there are there. And indisputable why those who aren't there aren't there. The books are going to be open, and we're going to be able to see. And I'll tell you, I want to be there. If you ever read anything about John Lanfear, I basically want it to just basically say Jesus Christ. And his, his robe... And it's all about him and not me. Because it's because of Jesus and only because of Jesus and his robe of righteousness that's going to have got me there. I want to talk a little bit about sealing. What do you think about when you think about sealing? Just anything. Just throw out something. Sealing something. What do you think about? House, yeah, you seal up a house so the winds don't come in. And boy, this morning, I don't know if you guys had some winds. Shoo! I thought our house was going to blow over or something. It was bad. Sealing the house. What else? What other, other sealings? Seal the deal. Seal the deal. That's right. There's so many seal the deals in, in business. I've Witnessed so much of that over 29 years or so, and I can't believe that. But yeah, seal the deal. It's so important. And once the deal is done, it's done. That's it. And you got a contract and rules. Anything else? Seals. Sealing something. Let me... Oh, envelope. There you go. Envelope. And do you lick the envelope, or do you put something on it to... Ah, I saw something. Ah. <laughs> Who knows what's on that, but send it sometimes, just whatever, and dear Lord, help it. Please bless this stamp. I don't know. Anyways, so um, uh, sealing. Let me, let me just kind of jog your memory. Does this get sealed? Yeah. How many of you ever had experience with this? Sealing. Boy, we got quite a few. Yes, sealing. And uh, what can you put in jars like this to be sealed? Food. What's your favorite thing to have in one of these jars? Anybody? What is it? Pickles. Peaches. What was it? Peaches, yeah. Salsa, oh yeah. Anything else? 
Applesauce. Mm, my wife made a ton of applesauce. We got a shelf full of cans, bigger cans of this, of applesauce, and it's so yummy. And she made salsa that is like my favorite salsa, probably. Just amazing. Anybody else? Pears. Pears. I love pears. <laughs> and uh, so, so ceiling. I actually, on the way here, I asked my wife to share with me, because I'm not the person that does that. She's amazing. And the process that this goes through. And there's a process, right? <laughs> Look at that. Those things like to stick together. And so this process is laborious. So my hat, so to speak, figuratively, is off to all of you who can. There is so much work. Part of the work starts by just prepping the food. So you've got to do a lot to prep the food, right? So you get the food, whatever it is, fruits or whatever, and, and you're going to clean it, right? Why do you clean it? You don't want contaminants in the jar, do you? You don't want to can a bunch of dirt and nastiness. And if there's bad, um, let's use pickles. If there's bad pickles, do you want to put the bad pickle in the jar? That doesn't seem right. Do you want to seal that bad pickle in there and just keep it for a year or so and then look forward to popping that baby open and munching on that bad pickle? Oh, I can't imagine. So you want to, as you're going through the process of prepping the food, you're sorting out the good food from the bad food, right? Does that sound a little bit what we're talking about here? A sealing time, a judgment, and then a sealing time? Sorting out the good and the bad? And sure enough, then you sort out the good and the bad, and, and then of the good that you're going to put in the jar, you actually start doing a process to that food of cleaning it, prepping it, Getting it all ready to go in there. And there's, based on what you're going to put in there, you do various things that are different from other things. Is that my understanding, my limited understanding of that? So then you get to that point where you got the food all prepped and it's ready to go in there. But it's not canned yet because it's not in the can. So then I guess you clean the jars and everything. You clean it all up and get it ready for the food. And then you put the jars, and I hope I get this right, you put the jars in some hot water, I think, something like that. Well, you put these in warm water, and you simmer the lids, these little things here. Is this called the lid? And what is this called? The ring. The ring. OK, there we go. So the lid, you put in some warm water, and you keep it getting warm. And there's a process of getting that seal nice and, and heated up and softened up. And so then that's all warming up and you got all this being cleaned up and, and then you get these cleaned and sterilized like and then you put the stuff in there and you got to put it in just a certain amounts because it's going to do something and I don't know. And yeah, headspace, thank you. And uh, so you get that just right, and you can't, you, there's a lot of, there. And then you put the little lid, wait, wait, but then you wipe off this rim to make sure it's really clean, because that's very important in the sealing process, right? It needs to be very clean, because we don't want to seal contaminants, right? Then we take this warm, clean lid and we put that little guy right on there just right. And then we put the little ring, thank you, the ring on there, but not really crank it, I guess. You just kind of tighten it, but not really crank it. That's what I was told. And, and there it is. Now you've got this water that's heated up and you got the little rack, and you're going to stick all these in the little rack, and now you're going to lower them down into boiling water. And it's got to boil for a certain amount of time for certain things. 
and I kind of feel bad for the little pickle. He's getting heated up, right? It's getting hot. But that's necessary. It's very necessary for the whole process. And then after a certain amount of time, and there is a certain amount of time, right? It can't go too long. It can't go too short. There's a time allotted for that. You then take it out of the hot water, and then you can take the little ring, I guess, off of it. And not yet. Okay, leave that on there. And then let it, let it cool. There you go. Let it cool. And then during the cooling process, is that when you hear a little pop? You hear a little pop. And that little pop is that little top. That little top all of a sudden goes from an uh, outie to an innie, so to speak. And the any means that I guess all of this hot has expanded and now it's contracting, it's cooling down, it's contracting, and it draws a vacuum and sucks that down in there. And that holds that top, that lid, sealed right up against there. And then you can take this off, right? Now you can take the ring off and you can store this for long periods of time because all the good stuff is sealed from contaminants on the outside and sealed in there for good, so to speak. Boy, the process. There's a process. And there's a process of salvation for us. Similar, as you probably can imagine, to, to that canning and how time is needed, right? God is going through this judgment process, and we're not going to get in really depth on this subject today. We're going to dive more into sealing time, and I've got this um, amazing chart on the wall of my office, and I want to share it with you guys, and I kind of going to I feel like we are right in the last moments of Earth's history. I believe we are coming into the judgment is happening right now. The judgment is happening, and people then are being sealed, and it starts with all people who have lived, and the sealing goes all the way through all the living, and I mean the, the people that have passed away. And then at some point, just before Jesus comes back and busts through those clouds, all of a sudden, it's got to get to the point where when he busts through those clouds, all people have been judged and sealed. And so at some point, right before he does bust through those clouds, the judgment and the sealing is going to happen to those who are living. And I really believe we quite possibly are the last generation. We are going to quite possibly see this happen in our lifetime. Quite possibly, I, we can't give years. No man knows the day or the hour, right? But we will know when he's even at the what? At the door. And if, if Jesus is right at the door, that's really close. The signs and this chart that I've got on my office door at home, I got years ago. It's an incredible chart. And lately, I've been studying this chart. And it is so detailed and in-depth. The man that put this together, wow, the hours that he went through and just tons and tons and tons of details. It's just exhaustive but incredible. And one of the points on here is definitely about the sealing time and how we are going to be sealed. And I'm, another sermon will get into the actual details of that. But this is just the, the prepping for that, if you will. And so I remember an old commercial. And uh, you guys... Some of you might remember Prego. 
the Prego, what's Prego? Spaghetti sauce. And so it was a commercial, and it was Prego in the, in the can, and uh, it said something like, Prego, it's in there. Marketing, I think that's great. I love marketing. And Prego, it's in there. What's in there, according to them? The good stuff, right? All the good stuff that you can put in a tomato sauce, it's in there. We have an opportunity to be like these jars, filled with the good stuff. The good stuff is going to be Jesus Christ. It's the best stuff you can possibly put in you is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's as easy as surrendering moment by moment, day to day, to him and inviting him into our lives. And... Let's go to that real quick. Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1. And we'll wrap this right up. We'll seal up this sermon. <laughs> Colossians 1, 27. It says there, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. And what is this riches of the glory? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Remember, prego, it's in there. I'd rather have it say of me, John Lanfear. Christ in him, right? That's what I want. If you, and I've told so many people, if you ever see anything good from me, that's Christ in me. If you see anything that's not nice or not good, <laughs> I've taken back self. Don't blame that on Christ because that's John Lanphier. I want Christ in me, the hope of glory all the time, 24-7, so that when that sealing time comes, I'm sealed with Christ in me. That's the goal. That's the goal. And to get to that goal, Christ might see that there's some little spots in me that need to take cut out. And that may be a little painful. Christ might see that, that I need to be put through a little heat to get me prepared and get the whatever out of me that needs to get out of me. And I'm okay with that process. I'm okay with just surrendering to whatever it takes to prepare me for that sealing. Let's uh, go over to our scripture reading in Revelation, and we'll close with that. Revelation 7. Verse 1. Starting with verse 1. And it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that they that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel <clears throat> ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. 
And there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then it goes on talking about those. The seal of the living God. It's coming. It's coming very soon, I believe. The judgment is going to happen before then. The judgment for each and every one of us. It's on an individual basis, and you're not going to get in by somebody else. It's on us individually. The judgment will pass by each one of us, and then the seal placed upon us. And whatever that condition we're in, it doesn't matter what you've done up to that point, so to speak. It matters the condition you are in right at that moment. At that moment, the seal of the living God is going to go to the saints who have surrendered their lives to Christ. And it's Christ's robe of righteousness upon them. And they're living by faith in Jesus and letting him live his life out through them. And then they're going to be sealed with Christ in them. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to live with you throughout eternity. Thank you so much for giving us your son Jesus to come down to this earth and to, to show us who you really are. A God of love, a God of mercy, a God of grace. Thank you, Jesus, for dying as a willing sacrifice for us. Right here and right now, invite every single person here and online, wherever, to join me in saying, I surrender my life. To you. I accept your free gift of your grace in exchange for my, my sin. I ask for you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me now of all unrighteousness, all impurities. Fill me now with you and your Holy Spirit. Live your life out through me, Lord. Seal us, please, Lord. Prepare us for your judgment upon us and the sealing time. Help us, Lord. If we ever get taken back self, remind us quickly. Help us to live by faith in you as we journey closer and closer to your judgment and the sealing and help us all to receive your seal and be able to be brought into your kingdom to live with you forever. Please now, also use us to help share this good news message to everybody in our lives while there's still time so that nobody hasn't heard this incredible opportunity to be sealed by you. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.